Welcome to this lecture, Bartok Beyond, where we'll look at the compositional implications of the Bartok pitch axis system, both within and beyond his familiar style. We'll look at octatonicism, just an introduction as it's a huge topic, cells, bebop scales, of course, related to jazz. However, of course, with some imagination and dedication, these ideas can be used in whatever style you wish to operate. So a quick recap. In the Bartok pitch axis system, chords are connected through both a relative and parallel connection. So, for example here, C major is connected to A minor relative. C major, A minor. Since we work also with a parallel connection, that A minor is connected to this A major here. That A major to an F sharp minor, to an F sharp major, to E flat minor, to E flat major, to C minor, to C major. And that completes the group. So in the Bartok pitch axis lecture, we saw how these chords could be substituted for one another, be superimposed. And we saw that these eight form the tonic group. There are of course 16 more. Eight from the subdominant group and eight in the dominant group. And we saw how music could move from one group to the other creating these sort of Bartok cadences. However, let's take a slightly different approach here and see what scale is made up from this group of chords. Well, here it is. You can see that it contains C major, and C minor, A minor, A major, and all the others. It's called the octatonic scale. It's got other names too, like symmetrical, diminished. It sounds like this. It is in fact one of Messian's modes of limited transposition. This means that, unlike the major scale, there are not 12 versions of this scale because it has some repeating patterns within it. You could start this scale on C, you could start it on D flat, you could start it on D, but by the time you start it on E flat, it would be exactly the same as this version here. So there are in fact three different versions, or three transpositions. We can think of it as the one starting on C, D flat, and D, and all others are just part of one of those three sets. You can see how the pattern is semitone, tone, semitone, tone, semitone, tone, semitone, tone half hole, half hole, half hole, which is the American way of saying it. So as such, it only has one mode. It can either start with the half step or start with the whole step. So this has three possible transpositions and it has only two modes. Sometimes these are called the half whole diminished scale and the whole half diminished scale. You will probably know the whole half from a Radiohead tune called Just, where you get the sense of this symmetrical pattern and almost like an Escher-like concept.
For this lecture, however, we'll be focusing on the half-hull octatonic scale, which we'll just call the octatonic, as it has generally more wider applications. Now there's a number of ways to look at this scale, and in fact that's its power. It's very multiple, it can meet lots of harmonic contexts. So of course it can be created by the use of the eight chords C major and minor, E flat major and minor, F sharp major and minor, A major and minor, and collectively they form this scale. It can be done a little more efficiently if you think of C major and minor, and F sharp major and minor, the tritone relationship. That's the sort of sound it possesses. So within it, there is a dominant seven. Hence its use in jazz. Essentially what it can do is accommodate a dominant seventh modality, but add all sorts of tension. Yet still retain that identity. So there's a huge amount of potential with this scale, even just on one chord, one dominant chord. Um, but often it's used momentarily. For example, we ha could have a C7 that resolves to F, and on that C7 we could use octatonicism before resolving to that F. So it could be used as a more local momentary dissonance. There are so many examples of octatonicism in so-called classical music, but we're going to hang around this jazz area just as a starting point. So that's our first viewpoint. It can take a dominant chord. It can basically provide the underlying structure of a dominant chord, but all this added dissonance and a fluidity because of its symmetrical nature. So just to recap, the half-hole octatonic scale is a dominant seventh chord, which also has these added dissonances, the flat nine, the flat three or sharp nine, and the thirteenth, which is kind of sweeter. Uh, in addition, we have this flat five. which is the sort of bitter sweetness of it. 
but that multiplicity goes deeper still. Remember that it occupies a major chord and a minor one. So a dominant seven and a minor seven. Not only that, it also has a minor seven flat five or half diminished and a full diminished. So it's got a ridiculous amount of sort of functional possibilities. The most efficient way to describe it actually is a diminished seventh. So this is C diminished seven and one a semitone above it. Those eight notes are made of two diminished seven chords a semitone apart. This elegant description is actually really deep. If you think of C octatonic as having a C diminished and a C sharp diminished here and here, the other two octatonic scales, for example, C sharp has that C sharp also and one a semitone above which is D. I've written B here because it's the same, B diminished seven. And then the final group has these. So every octatonic scale has two diminished seventh chords, one that's shared, with one of its neighboring group. That's a lot to take in, I know. But what you should in general see is that the octatonic is multiple in that it can describe lots of different harmonies in one scale. And it's very fluid in that it can move to other octatonic scales very closely and also with a lot of shared notes. So it's a hugely powerful compositional tool. It also affords harmonies that you don't find in diatonic music, as you're probably discovering. These are given special names, actually, because of their use in modernist music and our lack of a conventional vocabulary for them. You can use fort numbers or pitch class sets to describe them, but once it's useful to do so, we can give them names like alpha, beta and gamma. I'll just run through them quickly. So the alpha chord has got this diminished lower structure this more octatonic higher structure pretty juicy beta chords I love C sharp E G. sort of dominant 7 flat 9 world and there are various reduct redacted forms of them finally the gamma chord which is very major minor twisted so one example would be A C natural C sharp as with Stravinsky feel to that E and G so sort of both a major 7 and a minor 7 kind of like a uh, Hendrix chord Because of the multiple and parallel nature of the octatonic scale, there are practically countless compositional applications and insights. Here, just five. For example, this one scale, C octatonic, can be used on a C7 chord, but it can also be used on a E flat seven chord, an F sharp seven chord, and an A seven chord. Or F sharp or A. So beautiful. 
a corollary of that concept is that there are four dominant chords available with one octatonic scale, which means there are four available with the next one and four with the next, which means that you can reach all dominant seventh chords, a semitone up or below it. Everything is an easy reach. And not just dominant chords, all major chords, all minor chords, all full diminished, all half diminished chords, and many others are available within one octatonic or in a very close octatonic scale. Here's another idea, is that within the octatonic scale, we can freely transpose in minor thirds or in a tritone to minor thirds. For example, if we take a passage in C minor, this could be true. Could be transposed in minor thirds or within that scale. There's huge power there. Uh, what else do we know? Well, we have eight triads within one octatonic scale. That's really where it comes from, octatonic eight keys, four major keys, four minor keys. So on C7 again, we could play C minor, E flat minor, A minor, A major. Really powerful and really good for voice leading. And finally, if we take a sequence, let's say of dominant chords, like the bridge of a rhythm changes, D7 to G7, C7 to F7. Then if we use octatonic on each, we have many, many options. So here's the sequence in question. D7, G7, C7, F7. Now remember that in octatonicism, this D7 could be substituted by any dominant chord minor thirds away, actually any major or minor chords at minor third intervals from it. Same with this, same with this, same with this. So we get various options for each chord, more than listed here. That's D major or D dominant seven, D minor seven, actually D diminished seven. Same with F, same with F minor and all these possibilities here. So we can create loads of trajectories through these. So let's just start with one. I'm going to just play some really simple phrases and we'll go D7, D flat 7, C7 and I'm going to go down a semitone to that B here. So let's see. <laughs> down chromatically we can also go up in whole tones you can see d e f sharp so let's try i'll start on the a flat and go up in whole tones any combination of those And of course, these could be any chords, major, minor, and so on. It could be those sort of alpha and gamma chords too. There may be a chord like this, which is peculiar to octatonicism. And we can just do that up in whole tones. plates and everything works. So do explore this multiplicity and fluidity of the octatonic scale. 
And remember, although I've shown some modernist and jazz examples, this is really broadly applicable. Next time we'll look at some further ideas extrapolated from this, but spend some time here exploring and creating with this wonderful scale.